Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to learn a really neat trick. The trick to check your multiplications. Let's say we have the multiplication 24 times 67 and we got the result of 1608. The question is, is that correct? And if you're going to check it, just like my wife used to check it when she was a young girl in school, they would reverse the problem. They would take the result divided by one of these two numbers and get the other number. For example, they would take the number uh, 1608, which is the result of the multiplication, and then they would try to divide it by the number 24 to see if they would get 67. So they go 24 goes into 16, well it doesn't go, so now they take one more number, 24 goes into 160, uh, they would guess maybe 6 times, 6 times 4 is 24, write down the 4, remember the 2, 6 times 2 is 12 plus 4 is 14, and when you subtract remainder is 16, which is less than 24, so that's the correct number, then we would drop the number 8, again 24 goes into 168, well that looks like it may be 7 times, 7 times 4 is 28, write down the 8, remember 2, 7 times 2 is 14, plus 2 is 16, and sure enough, 67 is the result, which matches the number over here, and you say, okay, I did the multiplication correctly. That's a lot of work. There's actually a much easier way to do this. Instead, what we can do is we can draw a cross like this, two lines across. Then we take the first two numbers over here, we take the number 2 and 4 added together, 2 plus 4, that gives us 6, and that number goes in here. The next thing is we take 6 plus 7, 6 plus 7, which is equal to 13, which is still a number greater than 9, then we add the 1 and the 3 together, 1 plus 3, we get 4, and that number goes down here. So remember, the 6 goes on top, and the 4 goes down at the bottom right here. That's the result of adding the numbers of the two numbers you're multiplying. Now you multiply the 4 times the 6. 4 times 6 is 24, and that means we're going to add the 2 and the 4 together. 2 plus 4 gives us 6, and we write that number over here on the left side. Now all we have left to do is add up these numbers right here to see if we get a 6 over here. Now one more trick, if any two numbers or any three numbers add up to 9, you can simply ignore them. For example, 1 plus 8 adds up to 9, so we can ignore those two numbers. All that's remaining is 6, and that number goes in here. So this 6 comes over here. And if these two numbers are the same, your multiplication is correct. Well, the chances are that they are correct because it could be that, for example, let's say that instead of this being a 0, this was a 9. So instead of this was a 9, then of course the 9 would also disappear and you still get the same number. And then even though you had a wrong answer, you still think that you were correct. But the chance of that happening is pretty small, so we're going, not going to worry about that right now. Okay, if you didn't quite get that, we'll do a couple more examples and by then I think you'll figure out how to do this, this uh, technique. So here let's say we're multiplying 12 times 18 and we want to know if our answer 216 is correct. Well one quick other way we can do is this. We can multiply the last two digits together. 2 times 8 is 16. That ends in a 6. Your answer better end in a 6. Again over here you're multiplying 65 times 65. 5 times 5 is 25, which ends in a 5. You answer better end in a 5, or it's definitely not correct. And here again, 3 times 5 is 15, which ends in a 5. You answer better end in a 5 as well. So that's a quick check to see at least if it's correct in that respect. But again, to our quick technique here. Again, we draw two lines this way. The number on top will simply be the sum of those two. 1 plus 2 is 3. That number goes over here. Then we add 1 plus 8. That adds up to 9. Remember, every 9 goes to 0, so 1 plus 8 is 9. That becomes a 0. 0 times 3 is a 0. Now all we have to do is add these numbers together, and they better add up to 0. But again, if it's a 9, that becomes a 0. 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 6 is 9. 9 becomes a 0. Write a 0. These two numbers are the same. Our answer is probably correct. Let's try this one. 65 times 65, remember the trick, we multiply 60 times 70 and add 25 to that. 6 times 7 is 42, add the two zeros is 4,200, add 25, you get 4,225, which we know now that's probably correct. But how do we check real quick? Again, we draw the two lines, we add the 6 and the 5 together, 
6 plus 5 is 11. Now we add the 1 plus the 1 together. 1 plus 1 is 2, and that number goes on top here. Again, for these two numbers, 6 plus 5 is 11. 1 plus 1 is 2. That number goes down here. Now you multiply these two numbers together. 2 times 2 gives me a 4. Now I add up all these numbers together, and they better add up to a 4. Again, any numbers that add up to 9, we can simply ignore. 2 plus 2 plus 5 is 9, so we can ignore those three numbers. All I have left is a 4, and sure enough, if those two numbers are the same, my multiplication is correct. So finally, for a really big challenging example, again, the, the, the technique is exactly the same. We draw the two lines. Up here, that is the sum of those numbers added together, but remember, 4 plus 5 is 9, the 9's drop out. All I have left is 3 plus 2, which is a 5, and I can put that over here. Next, I add these three numbers together and put those over here. But again, 6 plus 3 is 9. All I have left is a 7. That goes down here. Now I need to multiply those two, two numbers together. 5 times 7 is 35. 35, that's a 3 and a 5. I add those together. That gives me an 8. That goes over here. Finally, I add these numbers together, and I better get an 8 over there. But again, any numbers that add up to 9, I can simply ignore. I have a 2, a 2, and a 5 here. So those three numbers together add up to 9. I can ignore that. 3 plus 5, that's equal to an 8. And sure enough, those two numbers are the same. My answer is probably correct. Now let's illustrate why we say that sometimes this trick doesn't work. For example, if we take the multiplication, how about 16 times 12? 2 times 6 is 12. Write down the 2. Remember 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 1 is 1. Add these together, you get 192. Now, again, we'll use a trick to see if we did this correctly. You write down the two lines, and 1 plus 6 gives me a 7. 1 plus 2 gives me a 3. 3 times 7 is 21. That's a 2 and a 1. Add those together, you get a 3. And when we add these numbers together, they better add up to a 3. 9's disappear. We have a 1 and a 2 left. That equals 3. And sure enough, we did it correctly. But what if we made a mistake? What if we said, oh, my answer was 183. I just made a mistake, and instead I wrote 183. Again, you would do the same thing. You add the 1 and the 6, gives you 7. The 1 and the 2 gives you 3. 3 times 7 is 21. You add the 2 and the 1 together, you get a 3. And now, of course, you would add these numbers together, and you'd say, well, I hope they add up to a 3. Well, a 1 plus 8, that's a 9. That disappears. You're left with a 3. You write down the 3. You go, ah. My answer is correct. So you can see it is possible to get the wrong answer and think you did it correctly using this technique. The probability of that happening is fairly small. And another check you can do real quick just to make sure, just like I said before, when you multiply 2 times 6, you get a 12. You know that ends in a 2. Your answer should end in a 2. Since it doesn't end in a 2, you already have a hint that that is probably not the correct answer. We should probably do it again and see where the, the error lies. Anyway, that's why I wanted to make sure you understood it's not a fail-safe method, but 99% of the time, if you use the two methods combined, you'll get the correct answer, and if you don't, you'll know that you did not get the correct answer, and that's how it's done.